OK. So um, I'm going to talk about reflecting on everything is a string. And if you're familiar with tickle terminology, then um, you know that um, everything on short AS is a technique that was introduced in tickle from version 8. And uh, the first two bullet points here just tell you what is the content of my talk. So today, this uh, thing, everything is a string, uh, which was valid in tickle below version 8, is not any, any longer um, valid. Now it's everything is indistinguishable from a string. And internally, on the C um, side of the language, you have tickle objects and tipple object types. And I'm going to show an extension, which is called tickle value which enables you to write your own tickle object type from within tickle without going to the C level. So to get a little overview, I have a quick survey. How many of you have written extensions to tickle on the C side, C API? So that's almost anybody. So almost all know. So how many of you know what a tickle object type is? So this is still almost all people, or maybe 60%. And how many of you have implemented their own tickle object types? It's around. Yes, but it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still half of, let's say, half of the audience. But still, there are a lot of people who know what the tickle object type is, but have never done their own. And um, the reason I think is that it's actually um, you have to go to the C level and it's actually hard to get it correct with the reference counting and everything. So when you do that, typically your tickle will crash very often while developing this stuff. And that's why I did uh, the tickle value extension. So first I'll do a short recapitulation what happens um, for this simple four lines of code on the left, which add two numbers in tickle. So if you run this code in tickle 7.6, just before 8, then the first line set A3, it puts a one character string 3 into variable A. Second line puts a one character string into B. Third line, which adds those two numbers, it seems like a single thing, but it actually performs a lot of work. First, it converts the string 3 to a binary 3. Then it also converts the string 4, decimal string, one character, into the binary 4. Then it gets some memory to store the result in. Then it performs the addition. This is a single machine, machine instruction in the end, which gives a binary 7. Then it converts the binary 7 to the decimal string 7, stores it into variable C. And finally, if you write it to the terminal, you print that string to the terminal. So you see that the actual work, it's only that line execute a binary addition that runs in a single machine instruction in one nanosecond. But most of the time, Tickle is very busy converting decimal strings to binary strings and vice versa. And all of that uh, adds up. So in the end, the equivalent uh, code in C would be 100 or 1,000 times faster because Tickle is spending thousands of CPU cycles just on converting copying data. Now, when um, Tickle 8 came out, Oops. I'm sorry. It should come back, yes. So when Tickle 8 came out, things changed a little bit. So what happened? Actually, the first two lines perform more or less the same thing. They put one character string into A and B. Then when you run the, the expression command, you convert the string to binary bit pattern, but this is additionally stored in the variable A. And also, the 4 is stored in variable B. And after you execute the addition, you store the binary number 7 into C. And only when you uh, are ready to print that out to the standard out, you actually convert the binary number to the string and then print it out. So if you run this a single time, it will not be faster, because you're actually doing more work. You're storing the binary representations in the variables. But if you repeat that addition or do more work on the arithmetics, then you do not need to convert the strings all the time. You just can use the binary representation that's stored in the variables. And that makes it run faster. So for example, this expression line, it runs two to three times faster in 8.6 versus 7.6 on this MacBook. I've tried it. If you have not only numbers, but uh, different data structures, there can be a much larger speed up. For example, um, I ran this code 
which makes a 1000 element list in both tickle 8 and tickle 7.6. In tickle 8, assuming that you already have this list representation, the binary list, accessing the 900 first element in the list is just adding to a pointer. It's like a single instruction in C. And if you do that in tickle 7.6, you actually have to count all those elements from the start to read the first, parse the second, third, and so on, because it's a white space separated list. You need to find the white space and arrive at the 901st. So this takes you to, it takes 100 times longer on this MacBook than if you use the representation from tickle 8. So now the tickle core defines um, at least 33 of those tickle object types in 8.6. So there are the obvious ones like integer, double, bigger numbers, list, dictionary. But there are also others like regular expression, expression code, parsed var name, and so on. Uh, and I will show you how that works in a live demonstration. Typically, let's hope that it works. Typically, you cannot notice that um, there are these internal representations unless you call a special function, tickle unsupported representation on it, or you run a hacked tkcon, this beast, which has an added inspector, which shows you all the global variables. I will um, skip the internal global variables that tickle usually loads at start, just to make it easier to follow. So I'll first set, for example, the variable a to some odd number. Then you will see that A is a pure string with this string representation. If I set B to some other number, ah, sorry. And then I'm adding those two numbers then actually the type of A, B, and C changes to um, integer. And the C variable does not have a string representation. Only if I make it printed to the standard out, then the string representation is generated from the internal representation. Maybe now you ask how it is possible that this tkcon displayed the string of the C computation before I actually made the string representation. The thing is, it's a very special hack tkcon that uh, copies the data and avoids making the string. It just displays it for you, but in the live interpreter, it avoids that. But um, this is also useful not only for computation. Consider a regular expression. For example, let's say this is a number of O's. This is just a pure string. And I match that regular expression to hello. Let's display that. Then this variable which holds the regular expression is also changed its type to internal representation of regexp. Why? Because to execute such a regular expression, it's actually two steps. First, you need to understand what O plus means. That takes a lot of time. Then you apply it to the string, hello. And um, by this technique, tickle only compiles the regex once, stores it in the variable re, and applies it if you use that regular expression for a different string, it just applies the same thing without compiling again. So it's a very clever method to cache something like an um, embedded DSL. Back to the talk. OK. so. On the C side, what do you have to do to, to make such a tickle object type yourself? Because an extension is allowed to define such a tickle object type on itself. So a tickle object stores a string, an internal representation. One of them can be null. And uh, for the tickle object type, you need to define a bunch of uh, um, functions in C. It's like a constructor, which defines what happens, how to make that internal representation a destructor, which defines how to, to, to remove that, a copy constructor, and a procedure, which tells you how to create a string out of that in, internal thing. So for example, if it would be an integer, it's just something like printf, more or less. 
Now, um, yeah, as I said, um, I will be showing you how you can actually do all of that without going to the C level and just um, writing this tickle object type in tickle itself. For example, let's um, look at a, at a tickle object type that you might need. Uh, an ordered set. An ordered set is like a unique list of values. Sometimes you need this to store options or something like that. And a value can only occur once. So if you merge ABC with B, then you still get ABC because it must be unique. And ordered means if you add some more to it, then the um, order of the insertion um, actually stays the same. You can do that already in Tickle very efficiently with a command digit merge. Because if you use a dictionary and just some odd uh, value for the values, which doesn't matter, you merge two dictionaries, you get exactly that. But the thing is, um, the representation of that, it still has the, these stars in it, which you do not really want. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I have uh, prepared a scripted type here, which is called OSET. And um, for example, let's take a variable A, B, C, or whatever. I clean up the other ones. OK, so no, now this, this is the set O is just a pure string. Then if I load the tickle value extension, and I also load the code, which I'm going to show you later, I can actually shimmer this value to an ordered set. So this command changes the type of O from a string to an ordered set. Now let's try um, the, the ordered set structure. It, has, uh, it returns to me a command. This command is um, a tick lower object. And it's the internal representation behind this ordered set. I have a method to modify it. For example, I can insert an F into it. Then you get back the, the dictionary that backs it up, A, B, C, F. But there's still the string representation sticking around, A, B, C. And for that, I have another command, tickle value invalidate, which kills the string representation of O. So now it's all clean, more or less. And if I'm going to serialize this with the puts, I'm forcing the string representation, you get ABCF. Of course, that's now very um, unconvenient because this extension by itself, it breaks the everything is a string. You can in play mess around with the string representation. But if you wrap it up in, um, in a nice functions, then in the end, this thing um, will be completely everything is a string compliant. And what is now the code to do all that? It looks like this. So um, first you load tickle value, and then you register a new type, ordered set. And this is basically a tick low O class. Um, it consists in the, in the simplest case, it has just the constructor, which gets the original string that you stick in as, as an argument and creates the internal representation. In that case, it's um, a dictionary. It's all stored in a dictionary. And it goes over the arguments and sets, um, um, sets it with, a, with a, a fixed value 1. Then you need the update string proc, which creates from a dictionary this string. This basically means you return all the keys. So it's just dict keys. And if you want to actually do something useful to it, you need a function which modifies it which is hidden behind this method insert now. There are also the free interrep and uh, duplication procedures, which are not needed in the simplest case, because um, it uh, maps to the destructor and to the method cloned. And for a simple tickle o object, you don't really need that. OK, and that is just the functions that uh, you can then use to to make a command similar to the dict command. So you have dict create, dict insert. You can have oset create, oset insert. And if you um, 
wrap all of that up, what I showed previously, you have a fully, uh, everything is a string compliant, um, have a fully, uh, a type that is fully one, uh, everything is a string compliant thing. Now let's go to, um, to different uh, things which may not be 100% compliant, but still cool. For example, um, what happens if you're in a regular tickle shell if you now use for each to go over this O? Because it's now it looks like a list, A, B, C, F. So you could do for each X, go over O. And um, what happens in the tickle core is for each expects that the O is a list. So it asks the value O to become a list, which means it creates a string and then from the string a list and the internal representation is lost. But um, there is a special hacked version of for each in this uh, tickle value. So you have, if you do this, you see that it spits out all the individual values, A, B, C, F, but um, the, the, the value O is still an ordered set. How does that magic work? Basically, you need to add into your type the method iterate. That becomes a generator. And uh, the hacked version of for each checks if the value, if the list, which is supposed to iterate, if it's a scripted type. And if yes, it calls the method iterate on it and um, goes over each individual value. So this generator just yields every uh, value in the ordered set. Um, you can use that to uh, create, for example, a command x range. This is a simple command which just returns, it seems so, a list of values from 1 to 10 or from, from whatever number to number. So you can write your for loops like for x, x range 2 to 20 puts x instead of the typical C style loop. And this works as expected. Now, um, consider that um, this could work with a standard list, but this is uh, really, this X range is really an object returning a special, special type in that sense. Let's see. So the K is an X range. It doesn't have a string representation. Still using for each, you can run over it. And it produce, produces these values from an internal loop. Um, now you can do quite cool things. For example, you can make an infinite loop. So you go from 2 to infinity. And now push enter. Tickle would crash if you use a list because it makes an infinite long list. No, because the special tickle uh, tkcon hacked here, it knows that, um, um, that uh, this, is an, this is an object. It tries to, to, to print it. And um, the, uh, this, um, this object refuses to shimmer to a, to a string. And you can still run over it, but now I'm going to have a insert a condition to break it. So we're going over the infinite list, and after the fifth take, we stop it. That could never work in a standard command because if the x range would return an infinite list then the for each would just it would just blow up much more before excuse me uh, get, it, get it completely uh, correctly that uh, the, uh, the state is in the iterate not in the uh, in the object itself so if you if you do uh, a loop again, already it will start again at two. I can show you, yes, but that's actually a very good point. If I start again, it will start at two because what this for each does, it. If you did a recursive loop on the same variable, it would, it would work correctly. The way you I haven't tried, but we can try. <laughs> uh, I take a non-infinite list because it's easier. Two to five. For each x. For each y. 
over the same thing. You think like this? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So, but it can also be a bug inside the inside the thing. So, so in principle, I think it should work because what it does, it um, creates a generator um, from from this iteration function, a coroutine, and then for every loop step, it just calls the coroutine to advance the counter. So basically, if you have a nested loop, it if I fix the bug, it should in principle also work. Did this answer your question? Yeah. So let's say this thing is 95%. Everything is a string compatible, but I think this is white magic because uh, n nobody wants to print an infinite list. And it actually enables you to use to do this cool stuff like infinite generators. You know, there are generators which do a list of primes, and you can take five on it and something like that. Now let's come to a different example, which actually motivated this talk. There was a question on um, Complank Tickle not uh, long ago that some guy inserted a bunch of data into SQLite using TDBC, and he was uh, using up all of its memory, all of his memory. And the reason behind that is um, that you need to garbage collect if you use TDBC, even if you just insert, execute an insert statement uh, repeatedly. And if you use a database, what would be the most natural interface to, to use it from Tickle? It would be something like setDB connect to, to the database. Then for each row, run a row over the function query, which queries your database and returns a list of results. And then you go over the, all over the results. That would be the most natural interface. But the thing is, if you have a very big table or if this uh, runs maybe on a different uh, server, then um, you actually would need to copy all of the data to your client before this list can start to run. And that's why, this is one reason why TDBC does it in a different way. So if you want to do this, you have actually run this code, one to eight. So you first create your connection, then you create a prepared statement if you want to run it repeatedly. Then you execute the statement, you can then run over the results. Um, which pulls them individually from the server. And then you have to destroy the result. And then you have to close the statement unless you intend to run it again with different data. Now, if um, you look at this, you can actually use tickle object types to create the first kind of interface and do the second thing. Because um, here, we have this kind of regex type uh, tickle object type. If we store um, the prepared statement inside a tickle object type, you can actually compile it only once and use it multiple times, like in the regular expression case. And here in the result of the, of the, of the um, select statement, you can do the same as with the generator. So you have a result set object type, which um, doesn't really generate, pull all the results, but has a generator to give you the results one by one. And I can show you that as well. So I have a command DB. I can connect to a database called PeopleDB. It's just a SQLite database. Uh, let me clean up the, the unused variables. Y, K, O, OK. This CacheDB is just an <coughs> internal thing for the, for the demo to work. And then I can run a query on it. The result is stored here. Oh, no, let's, let's first save the SQL code. This is a pure string, as expected. And then I run query on this database with this code which returns me some magical object because um, it cannot be cloned. I'll explain this in a minute. And now if I run a typical for each loop over that, 
you get all entries from the database one by one in the, in the generator loop. Now, why is that magical? Let me try to run that again. That was one of your questions before. <coughs> the problem is now you get nothing. Should be an error message, but okay. And the problem is that um, you cannot, in TDBC, you cannot rewind a database result. So once you have iterated over all the results, it's not repeatable. And this only works if you're ever going to need every row once only. So let's delete all that stuff. If we run the query again and first create the string representation, ah, okay, it's a hack for each, but um, I'm sorry. If you would use the original for each on that, now it would use the string representation and you could run it several times because it already has stored all the results. Okay. So um, there is kind of solution to get exactly to that, um, to that interface. You could run the for each with the embedded query and what's really nice is that this is now a local variable, so it will clean up all the results behind the scenes after it's used up. Um, but the problem is that you cannot, at the moment at least, you cannot repeat results. In MySQL, I know there is an interface, you can rewind the result set, you can use it a second time. But in TDBC, I haven't found an idea, so this is some kind of black magic. I'm not really sure this will go at some point into Tickle because it contradicts a bit this everything is a string thing. This also brings me to the point that you should not really use the extension as it is now. Why? It has many problems and warts. For example, one is these um, scripted object types, they run in a slave interpreter. Because if you use the main interpreter in these uh, object type functions, it will crash tickle very soon. I tried this in the beginning, but if you, have, uh, if you try to concatenate an object as a string with another, and then you call recursively tickle eval on it, then you will crash tickle. So I need to use the slave interpreter, and that has lots of problems. You, so I have to um, make aliases from the main interpreter into the slave, and it's hard to transfer the data. It's not really obvious. Then I think um, basically the object types only um, allow shimmering to a string. You, ca you have no, um, no um, ability from an extension to say, this type can be shimmered efficiently to a list or to a dictionary or um, to a regular expression, whatever. Um, therefore, I have done this hacking with a for each command. It's a scripted in Tickle, so it's testing if this thing is a scripted uh, type, then start the generator and stuff. But of course, because of that, it will not be faster than the compiled for each command. It will, in essence, be slower. It could, if it's implemented in the core, it could be faster, but I think it's basically, it will be slower. And also, we, if you need to simulate the list, you also would need to script lindex, length, z, all of that, so that at no, no point uh, you, um, you lose uh, the internal representation of the scripted type. <laughs> and then, of course, tickle value will stop working very soon, <laughs> at last in, in tickle9, because uh, some of the interfaces that it's using to mess around with, with the internal types, they will be removed. But I think that still tickle value is a great experiment. You can write your own object types. It's much easier than to do that in, in, in C code. And to, to experiment, to shoot around a bit, and to get an inspiration what kind of interfaces we might need in tickle9. Because then if we take away all that uh, possibilities to math with the internals, we need official APIs, we need clean APIs to do uh, similar things. For example, to shimmer to a list. OK, so this is the conclusion. Um, Tickle object, tickle object types, they were really great ideas when they were introduced uh, uh, like 15 years ago. But the extensibility is, is stuck now because you have this only this string possibility. Um, maybe uh, even if we strip it down a bit, uh, clean all the rough edges, there could become a potential feature in tickle line that you could really make your object types officially in tickle line. And there is lots of cool features you can do with it, but you're always on the border of black magic, white magic. So 
it's, uh, it will be a different tickle than, than it is today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was commenting to um, Donald and Arjun during your talk that Jean-Claude Whippler would have killed for this 10 years ago. He was doing experiments with database handles through Tickle, and his problem is that the entire <laughs> database would shimmer into memory, where he wanted to do a select, reduce, print. You could defer the shimmering to the, to the print. So, I'm, I, thank you. I hope some of this can make it mainstream. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I would say I have this in matches hundred percent of uh, what I am thinking, uh, but I think I, I have one addition to make. I think uh, we are often running into uh, problems where, where we wanted uh, some type of garbage collection, and we're gonna do it because uh, everything shimmers. And I think uh, the one addition I will, would have uh, like to have here. Uh, uh, object types uh, which state I, I do not want to, st uh, to shimmer at all. I want to stay this type of, uh, of thing and I if uh, somebody wants to shimmer, uh, wants me to shimmer, uh, do not store the new value in, inside me, create a new create value. A new value. You can actually do that. That's what um, what I'm doing in this hack TK con to display something which is not officially a string representation. What I'm doing is I'm cloning the value, mm -hmm. and on the cloned value I generate the string representation. But do you have uh, to care for this on the outside? Yes, can't, can't, currently yes. The problem is the, the, there is actually a, a more to it. For example, um, if I'm using this TK con, you see if I do X range on an infinite list, then you get a kind of error printed in green. And it's, actually, it's currently it's not possible to throw an error from the string representation function. If you do that, tickle yeah. panics. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, should, it either panics or check faults. I have been seeing both uh, things. I can show a very interesting thing. That's actually, I think, a bug in, in, in TCL. So let's, um, let's create a parsed variable name. So that's quite easy. Uh, ABC, we set this to something. Then the variable var is a parsed variable name. It has a strange intrep. I don't know why. Um, and if I invalidate the string of that thing, then basically I have I expect that it just wipes out the string or that, that it somehow panics. And this will crash, tickle. But the thing is, tickle panic is not called. I, I mean, probably you cannot see this from a stack trace right now, but it crashes inside tickle uni char to utf for whatever reason. This, the thing is, I have this tickle value invalidate command. It tries to check, can I really wipe out the string representation? There are something like regex which set the update string proc to null, to null. So it checks if it's null, then refuse to do that, to not crash tickle. But the parse var name, it has a, some panic function inserted into it. Of course, from extension, I cannot check. That's not null. It's a panic function. But this panic function, instead of panicking, crashes with a sec fault, at least on the Mac. And what I want to have is a method to return errors, to throw errors from duplicate, throw errors from invalidate. That's what I'm doing for this uh, scripted types. Um, but it's not possible from, from standard tickle. So if I do puts dollar $A and the A is big object, it should throw me a clean tickle error that it's unprintable because it's too large. You should update your version tickle. <laughs> What's happening? It used to have a, 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 a thing to generate string rep, which would panic. That's been changed to null in, certainly on the tip of the A. <laughs> OK, thank you. <laughs> Problem fixed. Yeah, it was just cleaning, cleaning up the thing on that. It was stupid. Yeah, but it's, it's then on, I think it's then on trunk, because that ought to be, this is, this is uh, the official. 
I don't know. I, I, I have to check this. Yeah, I'm. I'm, all, I'm always on 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 tip. This is a very this is a very recent change. So. Okay. okay. So I think we should left the detailed discussion to the coffee break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> go into yeah, a yeah. core. Yeah.